Utility is a great paradox. It's something almost everyone needs, but practically nobody wants. I mean, think of all the stuff you can cram into a fanny pack, but when's the last time you actually saw somebody wearing one of those? Mankind's innate vanity is probably a major reason why so many rugged-looking crossovers are sold, opposed to minivans. But is there one vehicle that is both pleasing and practical? Well, the folks at Honda think they've got an answer to that very question. This vehicle right here is the 2013 Honda Pilot. It's the company's offering in the large three-row crossover segment, and from a design standpoint, it's, well, probably not going to win any beauty pageants, but it is a handsome enough vehicle, and most importantly, it is not a minivan. Base price for a front-wheel drive LX model, the cheapest one available, is about $30,000, which is right in line with its major rivals. The Pilot competes with vehicles like the new Nissan Pathfinder, Ford Explorer, and Hyundai Santa Fe, though not the Santa Fe Sport, because that only has two rows of seats. This top-of-the-line four-wheel drive touring version carries a window sticker north of 42 grand. Now that's a lot of scratch for a family hauler, but justifying the price, it's equipped with amenities like a navigation system, power tailgate, and rear seat DVD entertainment system. The second generation Pilot has been with us since 2009. Now, depending on how you count, that's between five and six model years on the market, which means this vehicle is getting really old. Despite its gray hairs and potential signs of dementia, though, it is still full of thoughtful touches, and there's a really good one right back here. Check this out. The glass actually opens up independent of the main hatch, and that is great for loading small items right into the back cargo hold here. But if you think that's the limit of the Pilot's thoughtfulness, you haven't seen the interior yet. And a perfect example can be found right back here. If you look, they've equipped these doors with not one, but two separate map pockets, plus there's a pair of cup holders up top. There is all kinds of storage space back here for shin guards and hockey pucks, or maybe inhalers and graphing calculators if your child happens to be a mathlete. Also, there are a pair of sunshades integrated into each one of the doors. Heck, does your living room have that? Probably not. Now, to access that third row bench, super easy. All you do is lift up on this handle here, and the second row tilts forward like this and slides, making for a, a pretty wide pathway to get to the back bench. Again, that is tilt and slide, not lift and separate, as nice as that might be. Now, surprisingly, there's actually quite a bit of room in the rearmost bench of the Honda Pilot here. I'm an even six foot tall and I fit back here reasonably well. You could conceivably put one or maybe two adults in this third row seat. But the second row is very comfortable. Lots of leg room. It adjusts fore and aft, and the backrest adjusts. I could be comfortable here for hours. What about you, Craig? Well, I don't know about that, Craig, but I could last back here for, you know, probably a quick trip around town or something. But say, do you mind sliding that seat forward a little bit for me? No problem, Craig. Thanks, Craig. Like asparagus in hollandaise sauce, the front seat passengers up here are smothered in cleverness. The front door panels, just like out back, have dual map pockets. Then there's a massive center console here with this sliding lid that's reminiscent of something on a roll-top desk, except it's not made of wood. And then over here on the passenger side, there's even more storage built right into the dashboard. Now up top here is the colorful navigation display, and it's shrouded with this nice little cover, which protects it from glare. It's controlled by a combination joystick knob at the very bottom of the center stack. Honda's infotainment system works well enough, but generally I prefer touchscreen interfaces. Speaking of this area, there are many small, similar looking buttons, and at times it can be hard to tell what controls what. This is one area where the pilot tends to show its age. Newer vehicles generally have cleaner, easier to distinguish secondary controls. When it comes to fit and finish, the Pilot is an absolute ace. When you look at the dashboard, all of the plastic pieces line up beautifully. Everything just fits perfectly. You won't find a crooked panel in this car. But one thing that is a little bit cheap in the cabin here is the gear shifter, and it's just a little bit loose, kind of floppy. It's the only down-market part of the car's interior, but really, is it that big of a deal? No. 
So one thing some people may not like about the interior of this particular pilot is the color. It's just there is a lot of black. The door panels, the dashboard, floor mats, seats. It's like you're sitting in a West Virginia coal mine. Thankfully though, you can't get black lung from leather and plastic. And there are some less austere colors in the palette to choose from. With the Pilot, Honda has spent its development dollars very wisely. They've delivered a high-riding crossover that is literally chock-a-block with smart features. And like a fine Bordeaux wine, this vehicle has stood the test of time very well. But one area it could use a little attention is under the hood. All models are powered by a familiar 3.5 liter V6. It delivers 250 horsepower with 253 pound-feet of torque. The engine's a little bit behind the curve, giving up at least 30 horsepower to some of its main rivals, but the transmission is way off. A five-speed automatic is the only one offered. It's at least one gear short in today's world of seven, eight, and even nine-speed transmissions. Out and about, the pilot's drivetrain is very, very slick. The engine feels smoother than satin sheets, and the transmission is just as silky. There's absolutely nothing to complain about with the way these parts function. The vehicle just needs more power and a few more gears. Despite its outdated drivetrain, the fuel economy is pretty good. According to Uncle Sam, this four-wheel drive model stickers at 17 miles per gallon city and 24 highway, which makes for a combined score of 20. I've actually managed to beat that, hitting 21.5 mpg according to the digital readout, and that's extra impressive considering that I've managed to keep VTEC kicked in. Yo? Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again, the Pilot is far from the newest three-row crossover on the market, nor is it the most powerful or technically advanced, but it has withstood the test of time like few vehicles do. And what's really remarkable is that it still manages to outsmart some of its fresher competitors thanks to all of those clever features. The Pilot is a true Honda through and through, and it really puts the U in utility. For more on this review and others like it, visit autoguide.com. That was good. In a pinch. And the second row seat is really comfortable as well. Plenty of leg room and it adjusts fore and aft and the backrests adjust as well. I could be comfortable here for hours. Well, I don't know if I'd last that long back here, Craig, but maybe for, you know, a quick trip around the block. Say, you mind sliding that feet sleep? Sleeper! <laughs> Put it!